cold weather has moved into the southern mountains of Appalachia, so I've had to harvest all my remaining stuff outside that would, would really be harmed by a hard freeze. So I've got to figure out what to do with it. Some of it, of course, we'll just go ahead and eat fresh. I'm gonna make a pot of green beans today. I have got might make some fried okra. Might even make Matt some more fried tomatoes in the next few days. But there's a lot of it that I really need to figure out what to do with it as far as putting it up for us to use during the winter. Now some of it, I, some of the peppers, I've got a whole giant basket full of peppers. I'll probably freeze. I might dry some in the dehydrator. But I'm also going to pickle some today. Now, I've made lots of pickled peppers in the past years, you know, all the years that we've been gardening, but this year I found a recipe that I really like for a couple of reasons. One, it's really tasty, tastes great. Me and Matt both love them. Uh, another thing is it's really easy, it's really simple, and I like those simple recipes. I also like that it's a kind of a, a recipe that has a little bit of fermentation side to it and a little bit of vinegar side to it. I shared the recipe real quickly in one of my Day in a Life videos a, a few weeks ago, and since then we've just continued to fall in love with the, with the recipe. And I actually found it, and I'll put this link in the description below, from Ladies Lee, Lady Lee's Home. It's a blog. And so she goes, gives lots of background information about how she started making them like this herself. And of course she shares little tidbits about the recipe that I might not share today, so you should definitely go, go look at her, her blog post. And, and see how where I found that original recipe at. Here's a jar that I made back in, um, I don't know, a week or two ago, and we've been eating on it. And you can see just peppers just stuffed in there. I do have some garlic in there. But one of the great things about the recipe is that I was also attracted to is that you can kind of make it your own. So if you've got some kind of favorite spice you like, you just add it to it if you want to add some dill or pickle spices or whatever, like pickling, like it comes in the little, you know, already all mixed together. Whatever you want to do, you could do that. I just went with the garlic. Uh, but another thing that I haven't got to try till today, I'm gonna to try it today, that I loved about the recipe when I first found it, is that you, she said it worked well with all other vegetables too, or a mixture of vegetables. So that's what I'm gonna aim for today. I'm definitely gonna do some more jars of pickle, pickled peppers uh, and I think I'm going to do some of the hot ones. I've, I've, mostly I like sweet peppers, but Matt likes the hot. So today I'm definitely going to at least put one or two down in there to give him some heat. So these are our cayennes that we grew this summer. But I'm also, some of the uh, last little things that I harvested were like these tiny little pieces of okra. So I'm going to put some of them in a jar. And then I have some of the little tomatoes that I went ahead and picked before the hard freeze. So I've got little tomatoes, so I'm going to do those and just see what happens. I might dig around and see if there's anything else, but I think that mostly I'm gonna do the, the tomatoes, the peppers, of course, and then the okra, just to finish up what was left in the garden. So the first thing I need to do is kind of wash all my vegetables and make sure they're clean. You can see corey has been helping me. We've got some jars back here. I really love just, again, because of the ease of it, of do, using my half gallon jars and really stuffing them full. And that's what the recipe, what she, she advises doing. But today I'm gonna use the just regular size mason jars because I'm thinking of maybe giving some of them for gifts for Christmas. So I'm gonna do that. And that way I hold on to my half gallon jars for sure. But I might share some of these with Papa Tony or Matt's uncles and aunts or whoever, whatever, whatever comes up. I love to give people handmade things at Christmas. Now, as I wash them, one of the things that she suggested was, and I did, and it's worked out really well, you don't have to take the whole stem off, but you can see how long that one is where I just plucked it off the bush and it stayed. So I'm gonna trim it down, trim it down lower, just so that it, it helps with as far as making them, putting more in the jar. And also, she suggested is to, on the bottom is to kind of make you a little slit on the bottom, and that allows the the mixture to kind of get up inside the pepper. So I'll be, I'll do that. I, I found it easier to do as I'm snipping, kind of to do both, and then I'm done with that pick that pepper. So I'm going to do that. For my okra, I'll probably just leave them exactly like they are. Of course, I'm going to wash them first, but maybe trim if there's any that with the that I've left a long stem on. Maybe that one. I'll trim that one a little bit. And then for the tomatoes, I think I'm just gonna put them in their hole if they're this little. Now some of mine, let's see, I think I want them in to go. This one, it's got, it's pretty small. It probably would fit down in there, but it's got a bad place right there. So I'm probably gonna quarter it and cut that out. Make sure that I don't put that in there. Any that's like that, that's got like, that one's got kind of got a little bad place too. 
just to make sure. So once I get these ready, then I'll tell you more about the brine in the next step. So I'm just trimming the, the stem off, and then I'm just kind of just making a little slit in the bottom. That's all on each of them. This kind of work is kind of can kind of be tedious, but it's the kind of work I really enjoy. I love to to put up food, every part of it. Of course, I like eating it the best, but even just this kind of just makes me feel like I'm really accomplishing something. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. These little ones like this, that will be really, really tasty, really bite-sized. Isn't this pretty? This looks like fall. we got the green, the reddish, the orange, and the yellow. Isn't that pretty? These um, ones like this and this one, these are habanadas, but they're not hot. They're sweet. bad place. I guess I'll just cut that part out and that'll be my slit on that one. peppers these kind of kind of long but kind of wrinkly looking they're shishito so you can see that's a ripe one and then these are the ones that were uh, had not had time to turn but they're still edible and I'm, I'm about to do the wrong end on that one and the hard freeze was gonna peppers are so full of water that they will just pretty much turn to sludge to slime if you don't get them in before a hard freeze This is a pretty one. You can see the variegated is kind of the little uh, candy cane one that someone shared with us. The habanadas, you can kind of see the variations. They kind of start out like a light yellow and then kind of as they're turning and then they end up that orange, lovely orange. Okay, now I've got them all situated, cleaned, got the top snipped off, got the little slit on the bottom of the peppers. I did have to quarter some of the tomatoes because of the bad places in them, but others I left whole. So I'm excited about that, about trying something different with this recipe since we like the peppers so much. Now, when it comes to the brine, this is kind of uh, the website that I, I'll link to down below says that it's sort of a fermentation, but also a vinegar method. So it's kind of a combination of both, which I really like that. So you're going to use water, you're going to use vinegar to cover your peppers, but then you're also going to add water to it. And with the water, she suggested or says to you boil the water. For each cup of water you're going to use, use one teaspoon of salt, pickling salt, kosher salt. You wouldn't want to use iodized salt. And then that's what you're going to actually cover, submerge the peppers with. Now, a lot of people I know, they do, I mean, a lot of the elder women in my community, they do a really simple method where they might take these, these cayenne peppers like I was showing earlier that I had, and they put those in a cannon jar and just top it off with vinegar, and that's it. And that's easy. And those vinegar preserves the peppers really easy. Um, and you'll see a lot of the people love to eat those with uh, pinto beans, with soup beans and cornbread, as we would call them. So you can definitely do that too. I like that this recipe doesn't use so much vinegar just because it's, I don't know, maybe I'm being saving or maybe I don't like that strong, that really, really strong vinegar taste. But as much as I like the fermented taste, if that makes sense. But if you're one of those people that just use straight vinegar, please share your recipe with us so we'll know. Now, as far as the seasoning, I've got, I've got me some garlic cloves. I'm gonna use those. 
I went out to the garden and found just a little bit of dill, so I might put that in one jar. I don't know if I've got enough to put in every jar. And then I got out some of my pickling spices. I might put that in there just to see, just to see what happens. So then I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to use, as I said, just a quart jar instead of the half gallon. And I'm just going to start putting my, putting my peppers in there. Might be able to get more in of those long ones if I lay it down. Of course, it doesn't matter. They're still going to be in there. Since I do have some bigger ones this time, these little ones like that are just perfect for this. But you just kind of pack them in there. Ever how you do it, it'll work. And this time I'm I'm going to the first time I just put the garlic right on top, but then after that when I made them I realized I could just start dropping because I like the I like pickled garlic. I, I look for those in the jars. So I could just add some as I go. Might even add me a little whoops, a little bit of the seasoning. I don't know, I'm not gonna add much of that. Pickling spices, boy, they smell good. So I'm just gonna start now that I've got that bottom layer, I'm not gonna be so picky just start kind of putting them down in there they make such a pretty jar too especially if you have different colors uh, of peppers different stages of the peppers or different colors I'm just gonna put a hot one in here but I'm not gonna put it in this one I guess I'll save that for another jar and put me one or two more cloves of garlic here on top let me squish them down in there now the vinegar, she kind of gives a description in the recipe is that kind of your flavor. So for that half gallon, I think she suggested putting a, a cup of vinegar. Let me double check that. Uh, no, it was a half a cup. So for this quart, I'm not going to add that much. And, and she kind of, in the recipe, says that it just really depends on if you like vinegar, how much you like vinegar. Um, if you really like it, you could go for the full amount. Let me double check. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, she says one-fourth to one-half cup for a quart jar. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, well, why did you get the half cup out? So I'm going to go for the whole half cup in this one. But you should definitely jump over and, and read her directions. Probably should have got my cannon funnel. But maybe I can do it. So there's my vinegar, and then I have my uh, salted water right here, so I'm just going to get it from there and start pouring it in. smells so good already with that spice and the peppers and the garlic. Mm, makes me hungry. It's not even dinner time yet. And then you just continue to fill it up until you reach the top of the peppers. got some bubbles going in on there which is okay she said you could you know like kind of go ahead and seal it and then like swish it around to stir it up but I don't really think I need to do that but what you do want to do is make sure that the peppers are under under the liquid so the first time that I made them the very first time this summer I didn't have a and I may have put too much brine in there I didn't have a any weights. I've never had weights before till this year. I bought some for myself after I started fermenting and I was doing the kefir because I thought I could use them in that, but I really can't. But anyway, then a nice subscriber sent me some, so then I ended up with even more. So thank you so much if you're watching. So with those, I may have got, I think I'm going to have to take a little bit out. Let's see what I can do. As this is the first time I've ever ever used them. It's very exciting. So it's just a, a round weight and you put it down in your cannon jar and kind of push down and it will keep your whatever it is that you're brining, it will keep it submerged. So then you put your lid on, put it on um, tightly and sit it over on your counter uh, for about a week and in the direction she says you can see how pretty they look they're so pretty in there and that ain't that pretty that it's so clear right now that in the coming days as it sits over on the counter at room temperature it will begin to get really cloudy and then it will kind of clear up well I didn't really notice that as much with mine maybe I did something wrong or maybe it was just different in my house 
but I waited a, a little over a week by the time I finally, you know, decided, well, I should see what they taste like. So I did, and I tasted one and just thought, well, they're delicious. You know, I think they're done, whatever. So another thing, she said you would begin to see little bubbles, like as that fermentation happens. And when that happens, you can kind of unscrew the lid you don't have to take it off they call that burping burping the fermentation but to be honest with you i didn't remember to do that every day and mine was fine so really pretty jar though of pickles i think i got this one too full i'll do better on the next one but i'm excited to to actually try i know these are going to be good because of the ones that we've already had so i'm excited to try to actually try the others i think i'll do some of the tomatoes now we'll see i love these little tomatoes i do have a great tomato recipe frankie chastine's green tomato pickles so you can check that out it's on my blog blind pig and the acorn you can find it and it's wonderful every year generations of her family she's passed away now I loved frankie more than anything her and lc her husband but her, their family, I don't, I'm not sure, I, I would love to interview them maybe next year when they do it, but there's a story behind it. But every year, her extended family, her kids and her grandkids and, you know, in-laws and cousins and every, anybody that wanted to, they would gather together at the community center and they would have a day of making green tomato pickles. And one of my dear, tre my treasures, several years ago, I got Frankie before she passed away to tell me, I wanted her to tell me how to make them. Well, she hand wrote out the recipe and I have that. I laminated it because it's just a treasure. I, I treasure it. I definitely should put some of those hot pep peppers in here for Matt. May have to dump me out a little, put them in it. But that's a really good recipe too and a really simple one. I think I'll put two hot peppers for Matt. He loves pickled green tomatoes. Papa makes them sometimes and his are really good. Now I'm going to, I don't know, I don't think I'm going to put no spices in it, but I will put some of the garlic. And then I'm going to put my, let's see, I'm just going to pour that in there. That was my excess brine, but that'll be okay. Put my vinegar and then fill it the rest of the way with the water let's see how if I did better this time I think I did I still got one too many tomatoes maybe I'll take that little one out oh yeah that's better okay and get me another look. Probably should have dried the top of that one off. I'm gonna get me a paper towel. Because I made a mess. So that's really pretty too with the green and the red. Those those will be good. Matt will really love those. Let's get another one. So I've still got more peppers to do, but let's see if we could do. I wonder if we could do a combination of the kind of of the okra. Another thing I could do is if I had a quart jar, usually I have a quart jar, or I'm, I'm thinking a pint jar hanging around somewhere, but I don't see one. I'll just put all these in there together. And I think I'm gonna put the deal in here with this one. So stick me some deal in there. And then some more of the tomatoes. Some garlic. little weights I was talking about they come in different sizes so this is the you can tell the size this is the one for the large mouth that I'm using and then I've got some for the small mouth too I'm pretty with the okra down in there 
it over there for now. Now, I'm going to be back to the regular peppers. So as you can see, this is a really simple, quick way to, to preserve things. Um, and I'm excited to try those different things. Another thing she suggested was like cauliflower and carrots. So if these tomatoes and okra turns out good, I'm sure I'll be doing those too. So it's kind of like just one of those easy recipes that could just be your go-to recipe, especially when you don't have time. Like I love bread and butter pickles, but that's an all-day event. Um, some other pickles, chow chow and things like that, it's kind of like an all-day event. This is just something you can do really quickly and you could just do, you know, a jar at a time depending on what you had on hand or what you needed to do. So I, I especially like that part of it too. That one's, I think that pepper's bad. I better not use it. I'm going to make, I think I'll put all the hot peppers in one for Matt. Probably should have put me one in here. At least one for some spice. There's a little one. Another beautiful jar. About to run out of garlic. I'm going to have to get me some more garlic. Put some of those green, one of those hot ones in there. I should be smart and mark the ones that are hot. I used red in some of them, I could be able to tell, but I definitely should be thinking about that. Really pretty. So I've ended up with about six jars, and I've got one more. I know enough for one more jar, and then if I'm, I might put all of these little hot ones into like a pine, but I'm going to have to go to the basement to get that. But I want to show you the finished product, though. So I kind of showed you a little bit at the beginning, but... Get one of the little... I think these little ones, these like this, made such... This is like the perfect size. So let me try this. Mmm. Mmm wonderful flavor. You can see all that juice running out of it. Really great flavor. Mm, very good. Me and Matt have been eating it with like soup beans and cornbread, those kind of things. But we've also eat it with like our, um, it's really juicy, you can see. Also with like BLTs and sandwiches, hamburgers, those two, those kind of things. It's just a really nice, nice flavor. It has really good flavor. Not overly strong. I was trying to think of something I could say that it's similar to. Mm. Maybe, you know, you can, I don't know the name of it, but you can buy the little peppers that kind of look like these little yellow ones in the store, might made by Mount Olive or something. Maybe similar to that, but better, I think, for sure. Mm. Mm. Really good. Mm. Now, if you're worried about the seeds, those little ones, they don't really have many seeds in it. As you can see, I just eat them all. But if you were doing bell peppers or something big, some of my bell peppers, some of these that I used, that would have been a bell pepper, but you see how little it is. So I don't think it has many seeds in it, so I'm just going to pickle it whole. But if it was a big pepper, you could certainly cut them in half, you know, quarter them, do whatever you needed to do. Or even these little ones, if you don't like seeds, you could try to get the seeds out. So when it comes to storing them, after I, I encourage you again to go read her recipe. But if, when it comes to storing them, so I've had this one in the refrigerator. Uh, that's how I've done all the ones I've done so far. These over here, I'm going to try at least a few of them. I do have, I'm blessed to have another refrigerator in the basement, so I have extra room. I could put some of them in it. But some of them I'm just going to put on the shelf in the basement, in my in my cool area where I keep my canning stuff. 
And that's kind of what she suggested. She said that if you were going to, that you could do them that way and they would last, I don't remember if she said two or three months or what she said. But since they're kind of fermented and then they have the vinegar, but that's up to you. Now, everybody has to do their own, what feels good for them in their kitchen. If nothing else, though, you could make certainly make them and just put them in the refrigerator like I did these. Then you don't have to worry about it. I'm sure, I guess, if you wanted to, you could you could actually process them in a water bath canner if you wanted to go that route, too. Um, I would guess that you would process them for maybe five or ten minutes. But it's such an easy little quick recipe. I think it's better to take advantage of just either... Uh, putting them in a cool dark place as she suggested or like I did this time just put it pop it in the refrigerator even if you were just making a really small jar you know then you could just put it in the refrigerator but they are really tasty and I'm so glad that I found her recipe of course it was just by chance I was just searching pickle recipe because I had so many pickles this year I mean I was searching pepper recipe because I had so many peppers. Our peppers really did outstanding this year. We got a really early start on them. For the first time ever, I managed to start them indoors to where they were really of good size when I put them outside. In the past, I've always started them in the greenhouse, but they are so slow because it's so cold in there in the beginning of the spring when we're first starting to start our tomatoes and things. And then by the time we put the peppers out in the yard, in the garden, you know, they're so small that it takes them all summer to actually start producing. Well, this year I was lucky by the time I, I had a, fixed a place in here upstairs instead of trying to do it in the basement with grow lights. So by the time I actually planted them, they were already good size and just really quickly we had peppers earlier than we've ever had them before. So I'm excited to have figured that out and I'm excited to have found this wonderful recipe. Please leave a comment and tell me about your favorite way to pickle peppers. It's hard to say. Even harder is tipper pickled peppers. you got to put all that in there. Please do leave the comment and share your favorite recipe. And as always, I hope you drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia.